Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Wednesday 26th of November. I'm recording the video today 8.40pm Eastern Standard Time on the 26th. I was expecting the session to begin with a bit of downwards movement, that's not quite what happened, it moved sideways, that fourth wave completed as a triangle. After that upwards movement was expected and we have a small green candlestick which fits the wave count. Let's have a look at the daily chart. And I'm just going to go over the bull wave count at the daily chart level because there's no difference at this stage between bull and bear wave counts because primary wave 1, 2 and 3 are seen for the bull count in exactly the same way as primary waves A, B and C for the bear count because 1, 2, 3 subdivides in exactly the same way so targets are the same and validation points are the same and the structure at the hourly chart level at this stage is the same for both wave counts I'm looking for a trend changer either primary for the bull count or cycle degree for the bear count it looks like upwards movement is continuing to find resistance pretty close to the upper edge of this black channel. This black channel is drawn on the weekly chart, it's an Elliott channel around primary wave 3, it's drawn it from the ends of intermediate waves. Every day in the text article I link back to a prior analysis where I show you on a weekly chart exactly how to draw this channel. I also show you in that linked analysis how to draw these aqua blue trend lines. This is not an Elliott channel, this is a double trend line drawn using the Gies approach in that classic technical analysis of stock markets. When the lower of these two aqua trend lines is breached by a close of more than 3% of market value, then using it in the manner McGee intends we will have confirmation that we've had a sizable trend change. We're not there yet. So while price remains above the aqua blue trend lines and within the black channel, any trend change I will expect initially will be just a second wave correction within minor 5. When we have a clear breach on the hourly chart of channels and some clear downward movement, I'll move everything within minor wave 5 down 1 degree and look for the downward movement initially to probably just be a second wave correction within an extending fifth wave because we should always assume that the trend remains the same until proven otherwise. So with that in mind, we should only call for a trend change at either primary or cycle degree when the lower of these two aqua trend lines is breached by a close of more than 3% of market value, and that size of the trend change would be confirmed with a new low below 182066, that's the start of minor wave 5, because no second wave correction within it may move beyond its start. At this stage, for the structure within minor wave 5, I'm aware that there is more than one way to label this long upward movement at the hourly chart level. I'm going to keep going with the way I've got it, with 1, 2 is a deep zigzag, 3 is 2.618 the length of 1, and still contains the strongest upward momentum on the hourly chart, and 4 is a running contracting triangle, it's very shallow. So here there's a nice ratio, bet ratio between 1 and 3 and perfect alternation between 2 and 4. For those reasons I'm going to stick with that labelling. So let's have a look at the hourly chart for the final fifth wave which is extending. It begins down here, this point down here at the end of the fourth wave triangle. Within minute wave 5 we have minuet 1, 2, 3 has no ratio to 1, that's important. 4 is an expanded flat, so there's good alternation between 2 and 4 here, and 5 is extending the 5th wave within the extending 5th wave itself is extending. Within it so far we have 1, 2 is a flat, 3 is close to completion, and it has stronger momentum mostly than 1. Within it we have the 3rd wave complete, the 4th wave is now a triangle, so we have I think a double zigzag for 2, and a triangle for 4, so perfect alternation again there, at 2077 the 5th wave will reach 0 0.382 the length of the 3rd wave, that's the ratio I'm using to calculate the target, because if this target's going to be met, then subminuet 3 should end probably a bit below that. When subminuet 3 is over, I'd expect subminuet wave 4 to break out of the channel, drawn using Elliott's technique around subminuet 3 and subminuet 4 can't move into subminuet wave 1 price territory below 2038.70.
I'd expect the upcoming fourth wave to show up on the daily chart as at least one, if not two, three or four, red candles or doji, or a mix of red candles, doji and maybe a green candle in there for a B wave. But it should show up nice and clear on the daily chart, because the second wave shows up clearly on the daily chart. And so that would give good proportion and give the wave count the right look at the daily chart level. Once the fourth wave correction is over, a final fifth wave up towards the final target at 2079 where minuet wave 5 will reach 1.618 the length of minuet wave 3. Because within primary wave 3 there's already ratios between 1 and 3 for intermediate degree and minor degree and minute degree, I'm not expecting to see ratios for these fifth waves, but I will expect to see one for minuet wave 5, because as I said there's no ratio between 1 and 3. When subminuet waves 3 and 4 are complete, if subminuet 3 does not exhibit a ratio to subminuet 1, then I'll also expect the following fifth wave at subminuet degree to exhibit a ratio, and so towards the end this target might widen to a small zone or it might change. Draw this channel using Elliott's first technique from 1 to 3 with a copy on 2, the fourth wave is nicely contained within it. It looks in this instance like the fifth wave might come up to find resistance and end if price comes to touch the upper edge of that channel. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis and I hope that all our members are having a most fabulous day.